Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? So as you're aware, I'm doing book reviews throughout the year and the book I want to talk about today is called Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before? by Dr. Julie Smith. Now this um, book I've done, um, this is the second take of this video because the first time I did the book review, it was way too long. It was literally like 20 minutes and I'm trying to keep these book reviews really concise. And the reason it was so long is first of all, look at the size of the book. And second of all, because I gave this book 10 out of 10, that's how good it was. Every single thing in the book made sense. Now, some of these books I've been reading and the title promises something and then you start reading it and you think it doesn't match up. But also you, there's things which are repetitive or there's things where you think that didn't need to be in the book. Everything in this book needs to be there. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a bio of the um, author. Dr. Julie Smith has, Smith has over 10 years experience as a clinical psychologist and was the first professional to use TikTok to give insights on therapy. After running her own private practice, Julie launched her TikTok channel with the mission of making top quality mental health education accessible. These videos have clocked up around half a billion views across her platforms and she was named by TikTok of one of its top 100 creators. So she's also been on TV um, as well. And I think the thing that I like about the book, the reason I gave it such a high score is, first of all, I just like the fact it's easy to read. It's easy to understand. There's lots of examples in there. There's lots of practical tips in there. Um, you know, there's information about... Um, the, the, some of the chapters include understanding low mood, dealing with criticism and disapproval, how to create a life with meaning, what to do with anxious thoughts, how to turn bad days into good days, in, how to turn bad days into better days, actually. So there's things in there like um, graphs, for example, there's a load mood cycle, which talks about the cycle that you can be in if you're struggling with depression or low moods. So your mood would drop. Then you say, what's the point? You know, what's the point in doing anything? What's the point in being here? You then withdraw. You withdraw from people and from activities. You then do less. Nothing changes because you're withdrawing and because your mood doesn't change. So then your mood drops again. So you end up being in that loop. And I like the way she talks about, she gives tips on how to disrupt those types of things. She also gives examples of... Um, Ways that we sometimes fight against things which are natural to us. So she gives an example of when if you're in the sea and you're fighting against the waves. And she says that a lot of times people are fighting against their emotions. Whereas with surfers, obviously they go surfing, they get on the surfboard. They don't try to, they know how powerful the waves are. So they work with the waves. So what she's trying to say with that really is that instead of just trying to say, I've got to get rid of my anxiety or I feel so sad today. I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Yes, there's a difference between, you know, um, being in a sad frame of mind for, you know, lots of weeks or even for several days and being really tearful and being in an emotional state. That obviously, counsellors are going to help you to move past that and find ways to not stay in that situation. However, you might just be having a bad day. If it's just one day where you were just not feeling motivated or the rest of it you can just say do you know what this is a day where I'm just going to go with it I'm not even going to fight against it I'm just going to sit on the chair and just relax because today I'm not going to be as productive there's nothing wrong with doing that she gives an example of people um, the film the mask she gives a really good example where in the mask he's wearing this mask Jim Carrey is and he turns into this fantastic personality and he's being crazy and all of it all of this stuff is coming out and then once he takes the mask off, the pressure goes. He can then just be himself. And she's saying that lots of people walk around with a false persona of pretending of who they were. It's not them, but they feel like that's what they have to do. They have to put on this performance, put on this act, when really they just want to breathe and just be themselves. She talks. She goes into that a lot more because there's chapters on don't compare yourself to others. There's chapters on um, self-esteem. There's stuff in the relationship section where she talks about attachment styles, but also gives tips on relationships. There's so much. <laughs> I mean, literally, I cannot read how many things there is in this book. I've tried to narrow it down, but there is. It's just it's a fantastic book. Um, she writes as though someone who knows her stuff in depth. I was just in awe when I was reading it because I'm thinking if I get to a point as a counsellor where I can be that 
you know, intuitive about what people want. I'm reading it and I'm thinking, I would go and see this psychologist if I needed to. I don't even know who she is, but just by reading what she talks about, I can tell that she would be someone that knows her stuff and would get you the results that you need. She talks about making, discusses, not avoiding anxiety, but facing it. There's lots of tips in here for anxiety. Um, and she talks about this idea that when people are struggling with anxiety, their main thing is to say, well, OK, I'm not going to go to that party then because I've got social anxiety. And so that's the worst thing you can do because that keeps you stuck. The idea is that you face the anxiety and what you say to yourself is, what is there to fear? What is the emotion I'm feeling? You know, you then say to yourself, even though I'm feeling nervous about going to this party or I'm feeling like no one's going to talk to me, I'm still going to go anyway. So you put yourself in the position of being in that place that causes anxiety and then you d you take action to deal with it because that's how you overcome it. Because if you avoid it, and there's a section in the book where she actually talks about this idea of we have a comfort zone that most people stay in, we have a stretch zone, which is where you push yourself out of the comfort zone and you stretch yourself and there's a panic zone. The panic zone is where things are too much, you've tried, to, you've pushed yourself a bit too far. So you don't want to go there. Occasionally you might do something extreme like a bungee jump where that's really out of your comfort zone but and you will panic or feel scared but you can handle doing that. But she says we should try and push ourselves into the stretch zone. So that's where you don't just continue and say, right, well, because I know this location, because I know this um, person, because I know this um, role, I'm not going to push myself any further. We should always try and get into that stretch zone and push ourselves more and more and more. She talks about making stress work for you. Use stress as a tool. You know, use stress to challenge us. She talks about ruminating thoughts. She talks about being kinder to yourself. Um, she There's a really good chapter on comparison and self-esteem. There's a really good section on the miracle question where you are... You think to yourself, so basically it says, take a moment to imagine when you close this book, a miracle has happened. How would you know? What would be different? What would you do differently? So that's a um, question that we use in solution focused therapy, which is sometimes therapy that I use, where you say to someone, this is what the, they say what the problem is. They want the solution. So sometimes they can identify what they want. And so you can say to them, OK, how would you know that that has been achieved? So say if you have counselling and you're at session one, by the time you get to session six or whatever it is, how would you know that you've achieved? What would be different? What would you be doing different? What would look different? So there's a few chapters that I am going to um, read. I'm not going to read too many of them. I've just highlighted them. So it talks about ruminating thoughts and it says rumination is like a thoughts washing machine. It's the process of churning thoughts over and over for minutes, hours or days at a time. We already know that the depressed brain is more likely to focus on the thought biases that can make you feel worse. If you combine those thought biases with the psychological equivalent of the renumination, then you have a recipe for more intense and prolonged distress. So she's saying you have to catch it when it happens. You have to do things like mindfulness, she talks about in here. You have to use distraction. You have to use, um, yeah, so guide, yeah, meditation, uh, distraction, gratitude. So there's lots of ways to get rid of these ruminating thoughts because what you're trying to do is stop it in its tracks, right? Another section is, this is the last probably one I'm going to read from. There's a few, <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to make this too long. The, the problem, it's called, the chapter is called The Problem With I Just Want To Be Happy. In therapy, when we start to shine a light on the way forward and hit, think about what we want, it's not uncommon to hear, I just want to be happy. I've heard that quite a lot as well from clients. But the idea of happiness has been hijacked over the years by an elusive fairy tale of constant pleasure and satisfaction with life. You don't have to look far on social media to come across a wave of posts telling you to be positive, stay happy. We're given the impression that happiness is the norm and anything outside of that could be a mental health problem. But humans are not built to be in a constant happy state. When I read that, I was like, wow, so relatable and so true. Every, it's, it's this idea that people want to be happy or feel they have to be in a happy emotion all of the time. It's not possible. 
and you're setting yourself up from the point that you feel that it is. And this is why a lot of people who either come for counselling at times or people who feel they need therapy or label themselves as having mental health don't. You're just having a bad day and you feel sad and it's normal to feel sad if you've had a bereavement or a loss. It's normal to feel unhappy occasionally for whatever reason. Now, it's about accepting where you are sometimes and just saying, do you know what, I'm feeling sad today. I miss the person who, you know, I broke up with a year ago or I'm feeling a bit not myself today. I'm not on track. It doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. We don't have to be in a constant state of happiness. And I'm glad she said that because she's put it as a problem. The problem is when you say, I just want to be happy or I need to be happy all the time. It sets yourself up to fail. So she talks about how to create a life with meaning. So how do you begin to... So what happens when you work out what is important and realise that you are not living in line with your values? How do you begin to move in that direction? When, it's just, when, it's, when we decide it's time for a change, there can be a tendency to come up with a huge radical new goal. But she says that your goal might be to complete a marathon or a massive goal like that. But the life-changing part comes from the things you put in place to help you get out running every day. So what she's really saying, because I've not explained that really well, is whatever goal you set, it's not just about achieving the goal. When you decide that your life has meaning and you decide that you're going to work towards what you want, your dream, your goal, it's the process of doing that that actually makes the difference. Whether you achieve it at the end or not is the bonus. But the fact of who you become to achieve it, she's not the first person to say that. There's lots of people that say that you have to become the person that is going to fits with the goal that you want because it's not going to happen otherwise and the final thing because I've got another is about um relationship myths so she's got a section on relationships and I just want to read the relationship myths that she says exist that don't help people to prosper in their relationships so one relationship myth is that love shouldn't be hard that if someone is right for you then the two of you should drift off into the sunset and everything should be fine that's a myth the relationship myth is that you should be as one. But in a relationship or friendship, it's perfectly okay to disagree. Another thing is that you should always be together. But it's saying it's okay to enjoy spending time apart. Another myth is that you are all should be happily ever after. From fairy tales to Hollywood movies, the story always ends as the relationship begins. A relationship is a journey that will naturally meet with many twists and turns and bumps in the road. And the final one is that relationship success means staying together at all costs. And it's saying that relationships have a potent effect on our health and happiness. But merely having a relationship is not enough. If relationships are to have a positive impact on our lives, then this means working to improve the quality of these connections. So all I can say really is this book, How, Why Has No One Told Me This Before by Dr. Julie Smith, one of the best books I've read. I recommend it to lots of my clients. I use some of the exercises with my clients and it's perfect. I don't normally give things 10 out of 10, but I gave this 10 out of 10 because it's just got so much in there. You don't have to be in therapy to read this book. It's about life skills. As it says on the back, the tools I share in this book are mostly taught in therapy, but they're not therapy skills, they're life skills. So let me know what you guys think. Have you heard about this Dr. Julie Smith? Have you seen her on TikTok? What do you think about my review? Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.